Hello everyone, and welcome back to World of Warship Splits with Terry. For those of you who have been watching my review style for quite a bit, you may have noticed that in Thursday's review on the Monahan, there were a couple of things that I haven't looked at. For example, I haven't looked at the camos, and I've only had one very short battle. So there's a reason for this, and I have teased this in, uh, in a community post yesterday, I think that there's actually going to be a second video to this. The reason there are two videos is, uh, well, you, you see what I mean. So if you're new around here or just haven't seen a lot of my reviews, I generally review a ship in such a state that what I think yeah, the, the average player would see, right? So we're not putting fully upgraded captains in there. I generally put the same skill, uh, the, the same skill level on the captain that the ship is in. Uh, I don't use premium consumables. I don't usually sail out with the historical camos. I do, though, occasionally max out ships, and that's where this max series come in. So what's the deal with this? Well, for that, we're going to have to look at the Blitz Pass. And um, you can actually see that the regular Blitz Pass that you can purchase, in, in my case for 30 Australian dollars, whatever that is in your currency, will, I think, somewhere, <laughs> I don't know exactly where, will somewhere yield you the Monohan. Oh, there it is. Add level... No, that's not. That's a portrait. Where is, where's the ship? I have, no, I have no idea. It's somewhere. It's somewhere in the Blitz Pass, and I, I haven't seen it. Oh, there it is. So it's in the Blitz Pass at level 40. So with that, you get the Monohan. And the review I've done on Thursday is for that. Right? You buy the regular Blitz Pass, you get yourself the Monohan, you put a regular as captain in it, and the ship is disappointing. It's, um, in my opinion, it's it's like a, it's a less good version of the Farragut. Now there is one thing that happened to them uh, that happened that I actually missed. The Monahan in game has a description of saying she's got two launchers of four Mark 14 torpedoes, <laughs> infamous Mark 14s. Uh, in actuality, and you can kind of see that if we if we're looking a little bit like this, you can actually see that she's got quintuple launchers. So she does get more torpedoes than the Farragut. Not just better torpedoes, but also more of them. But still, you only have the two guns. You have a disappointing AA. The the service detection isn't great. So and this ship here that you can get at uh, what was it somewhere? Oh, um, yeah, that you can get at level forty from the Blitz Pass is, in my personal opinion, disappointing especially for somebody who is not an expert destroyer player. What you can do, though, is you can throw money at the problem. And here's why. And this is the main reason why I'm doing this in two different videos, because you can turn the Monaghan in an into an extremely dangerous tier 6 destroyer, but you have to spend more money, because there are two things. There's one thing that you can buy, and there's one thing that you currently can't. The first thing you need is the historical camo. So you, either you can spend an, an additional a bunch of bunch of dollars for the uh, for the premium blitz pass, which gives you additional stuff like crate keys and things, um, and twenty five more levels and whatnot, uh, or you can spend whatever the equivalent of fifteen hundred gold is and get yourself the historical camouflage. Now, why would you? We want the historical camouflage. Well, uh, let's actually let's look at the stats of the Monahan again. Uh, this is the stock ship. She has a torpedo range of 6.6 .6 kilometers, which is 600 meters longer than the Farragut. And she has a base surface detection of 6.24 kilometers. So there is there is a small gap to do stealth torpedoing in, but it is too small to be effectively using this. With the historical camouflage, on the other hand, you actually get the torpedo range buffed by 4%, and you get the surface detection buffed by 4%, which if we do that, gets us to a torpedo range of 6.86 kilometers and a base surface detection of 5.99 kilometers. Still not great, but now what we can do is we can actually turn this into a stealth build. So if we remove the propulsion mod here and actually put the concealment system mod in, we get the base detection down to 5.37 kilometers, which is still not best in class, but it starts to be workable because now we're having almost uh, we're we're having almost one and a half kilometer delta between surface detection and actual effective torpedo range. Now you can't always fire your torpedoes at max range because you know 
they'll run out before they hit the target if it moves ever so slightly. And, you know, you're, you're steering, you're navigating. So you don't always have these one and a half kilometer. But this is not perfect, but it's workable. Now, the second thing that you can do, so you would have to pay money for this one. The second one you can do is you can use a different commander. And the commander you could use here is William Halsey. Now, if we are looking at William Halsey's commander skills, uh, he's a legendary commander, one of the American set. He has several skills that actually make him an, a very interesting commander for this ship. First of all, being obviously the preheating plus, because we don't have, uh, no, we no longer have the speed module, and we don't have uh, an engine boost. But we do get plus 45% acceleration and plus 4% max speed for 50 seconds. So basically for almost the first minute of the game, which gets us into position very, very quickly. The, the much, much more important skill is in the Fire Supremacy Plus, because while Halsey gets the traditional precise aim and rapid reload additional uh, skill, he also gives us an additional torpedo reload skill. And the Monaghan is one out of two destroyers, I think, the Somers at tier 10 is the other one, that has a torpedo reload booster. And one of the biggest problems with the Monaghan was that because it doesn't have any guns and is pretty average otherwise, it doesn't have any smokes or any, or any speed boosts, it only has one, has one torpedo reload skill to come out of the box. With this, you get two. The next thing that is somewhat interesting is the Adrenaline Rush Plus, because uh, this will, uh, if you're dropping below 33% of your hit points, this will drop the torpedo reload, the torpedo tube reload, torpedo tube reload time by 10%, getting us to like 52 seconds or something. Well, and a bunch of other skills that are somewhat useful as well. Obviously, the the angry bull skill doesn't help because it's for guns, but um, there's nothing really else great that we can take at this level. But these this combination turns the Monaghan from a YOLO boat that is really just a meme build, a good for a meme build and, and a quick one-off, or an extremely average destroyer into a thoroughly dangerous ship that can stealth torp, that has powerful torpedoes for its tier. I mean, these, these things do 3,500 points base damage. And while they're not particularly quick, you get 15 of them and you have with the two and you can use it twice in the battle that you have uh, the torpedo reload boost. So if you're in if you're interested in purchasing the Moynihan, I would say you at the very least you need the historical camo to make the ship work, other than what I've described in my last review. And ideally, you want Halsey in that, on that boat because he gives he makes a whole lot of difference on this. All right, uh, allow me to once more demonstrate. We are playing on straight and we are top tier. So we've got one, two, three battleships, a Nuremberg, Budjoni and two destroyers. So we do need to watch out, especially with Nuremberg and Budjoni, obviously. But we now have a stealth build. So we're not actually that easy to detect. And thanks to Halsey, we get off the ground very, very quickly. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna sail over to A, quickly cup A and then head over into B cup. And then we'll see how, how things play out. So full speed ahead and torpedoes onto narrow spread because they are on the widespread side. So you can't always get all of them on target if you're stealth torping. But uh, we are doing over 40 knots and this is without the speed module in slot 3 and without the engine boost just because of um, because of Halsey's skill. So we should be able to make it into A cup reasonably quickly and then we'll just see what comes up. All right. Anything? Nothing? No enemy DD spotted yet. I don't quite know where they are, but I'm just going to skirt along. Okay, there's one battleship. Just going to skirt along A, just cupping A. Still no destroyer in A. Where are they? Uh, they're not in B. Okay, and one enemy destroyer. Oh, there's the Nuremberg. Okay, Nuremberg's dangerous. Now, here's again, this is the thing, right? I can comfortably stealth torp with the historical camo. So I'm going to drop two torp spreads in the direction of the Nuremberg. I'm not going to bother with a third because the Nuremberg doesn't have much health. So, um, and he's coming under fire already. I just want to get, I'm saving my reload. I just want to get over into B cup and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not spotted. The Nuremberg doesn't see me. And uh, well, he just ran into one, two, yep, there he goes. Okay, that's one down. 
Uh, that Bayan over there, is it a Bayan? It was one of the battleships, and I think the other one was on the other side. It could be the Bayan, could be something else. Uh, yeah, it's the Bayan. Okay, so that Bayan up there, um, I think it was the Fuso down, down in our cup. Uh, Bayan up there needs to... Where is he going? Is he going on a flanking run along C or is he trying to... Oh, he's try, He's actually trying to get into B cup. I mean, he knows that I'm here, right? I just captured. So I might actually get spotted here. Okay, I am spotted. But I've, I've been waiting until he's going... Okay, he's coming out of his turn, so I'm going to drop the torps uh, a little bit ahead once he kind of has reached his, his speed. Yeah. So now he's kind of up to speed, so torps ahead, reload booster, and drop that ahead as well. Okay, there's the Pyotr Veliki. So I might be getting detected here again in a second, but um, torpedoes away on the Bayern. I am spotted. I'm not using my guns, uh, and I'm just dodging the shots that are coming from these battleships and uh, trying to get undetected again. And there we go. We're landing everything on the Bayern. Can we actually get him? Almost, almost. Uh, okay, but we're undetected again. And there's Fusu, Fubu. We've lost. We've kind of lost um, the space around A. Uh, just hydring to see if there are any Fubu tops coming. There they are. But uh, yeah, there's there's the there's the Fuso, and I am once again undetected. Now, if the Fubuki pokes out, I will be spotted. But um, there he is, yeah, Fubuki's coming out. So I'm just gonna just gonna reverse. I just want to see if I can contest this cup, and uh, might as well start using my guns at some point. But my torpedoes are almost reloaded, so torps out against the Piotr, who nobody seems to be really interested in shooting at me except for Fubuki, and. Um, if we're pointing our, our, our bows against, uh, towards each other, Fubuki has about the same fire, firepower that I do. So, okay, shot off one of his torp tubes means he either had to use a had to use a dummet con, and if he did, then he only has two tubes uh, available because that'll have to reload. Meanwhile, we get, we're landing hits on the Pyotr Veliki, and once again, we can't ju just not quite make uh, make the kill, but that's all right. We've already done seventy thousand points of damage. Okay, there comes two spreads from the Fubuki. That means he's out of torpedoes. Which means, hey, you know, someone else can deal with me. There's a cruiser right behind me. I'm just gonna sail past this Fubuki and, um, you know, wave at him or something. <laughs> so, yep, <laughs> you go do you. Uh, I've got battleships to kill. Okay, Pyotr Viliki is dead. And um, at, at this point, uh, we are running out of enemy team very quickly. But my torpedoes are almost reloaded and my torpedo reload booster is uh, off cooldown almost. So now it's just a matter of killing that Fuso for some more damage. But... Um, it could. I mean, I don't even need that. Uh, I just don't need the reload booster. Let's just overkill the Fuso because that's going to be the last ship anyway. But there you go. That's a dead Fuso, and I could have saved these five torps for something else. If we hadn't, I had two minutes left on the battle. If we hadn't, uh, if we hadn't run out of enemy team, I, I could have, I could have gone up to. I don't know how much did I do in terms of damage overall. Let's see. Uh, come on, there. I've done 104,000 points of damage. I could have done 140 if we had if we had another battleship sitting around there, um, and uh, then the battle hadn't run out, you know. So uh, this is. I mean, I haven't been completely stealth torping, and uh, uh, admittedly, a lot of this was also just to the inexperience of the enemy team, not really paying attention or focusing on me. But I have been invisible for long enough to not draw concerted attention. I've been able to stealth torp the Nuremberg, which removed one extremely dangerous ship for me. The battleships at range, I can mostly deal with. I can disengage, I can go stealth, I don't need to fire my guns, because I have guns anyway. And I can drop torpedoes in their wake, and if they don't really know how to dodge them, uh, this ship is extremely, extremely powerful uh, in these kind of scenarios. Now, obviously, if you're getting into destroyer into destroyer dogfights or if they're carriers in play it's a different story altogether so this is not a general purpose overpowered ship this way not at all but if you get into battles where you can use your stealth and you can use your uh, use your torpedo reloads and you get two of them and uh, you, you can do insane amount of damage in this ship so uh, this makes the difference between uh, a very very average ship or below average ship if you buy it just as it is and a very very dangerous ship if you get the historical camo and especially also if you can get bull halsey onto this ship and this is why i had two reviews for this whole thing because they are just in my opinion two completely different ships in these two setups that's it for me today thanks everybody uh and maybe one final word um uh, my, my reviews are always my own opinions <laughs> 
I am not being influenced in any way whatsoever in my opinions. And if anyone ever tried to influence me uh, in in my in my op in my opinions in my reviews, I would very much not be doing that. So uh, rest assured that when I'm telling what I'm telling you is what I personally think, <laughs> and that's all of it. Anyway, that's it for today. Thanks everybody, and I'll see you next time. Bye.